Welcome to my designer class. My name is Mercy and I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. In today's tutorial, I will be showing you how I made this beautiful card. Now, the main stamp set I used was, is called Feathers and Frost, but I used a lot of the sprigs from this beautiful new sprig punch. Now, when I got the punch, I was a little bit concerned how do you get things to place right and then put it on, et cetera, et cetera. And I came up with this idea, which might not be like a brand new technique, but I think that it really is helpful. So I will um, show you how, what I did and the template I created. Everyone knows I love my templates. So here's the template. And what I'm doing is I'm attaching to the circle and then placing it gluing it down and then adding the um, sentiment on top. So I'll show you about this template. Okay, I'll set this aside for the time being and I'll bring out the sprig punch. They're very, very easy to do, although I did do a couple. Um, one little tip I have if you want to extend the paper, keep turning your paper every other direction and you can fit more in. So there you go. It's easy as can be for that part. Um, so what I did is I brought in my one three-fourths inch punch and I just punched out a circle for the lower part of the sprigs. And then for my um, top sprigs, I used a much, much smaller punch, this teeny little cute one. It's a half inch, I believe. Yes, it's half inch. And I just punched that out. So. If you don't have these circles, you could maybe trace a lid or something, a button, I don't know, something like that, and you could still do the basic technique. So I will go ahead, bring in my, punch, in my sprigs, and what I did was I started off with the center one, and I wasn't too concerned to which direction it is, but definitely glue down your first one. I'll bring in my Tombow glue so that you can see how I did this and how quick it really is. All right. Okay. And I didn't go too high up. I just put the first sprig just barely on the paper and you don't need a ton of this glue just to get it to hold. So there we go. And I just kind of have it um, joining here, but I don't have to have the the top part of the sprig completely on the paper. And another thing is these sprigs, this one kind of turns a little bit more than this one. So I kind of like on the outer side to be the sprigs to turn in a little bit. But again, it's not a huge difference, so it doesn't matter too much. Just line them up and then they are all ready to go. So the top one is pretty much the same idea. I'll just empty this little container of my sprigs. But the only difference is I want it to go more out. And of course, I don't have a third one. So I will just bring this back in. Bring this one in, I mean. <laughs> and this will, these little circles will be covered in the end. But it really makes life so much simpler than if you were trying to um, line this all up, glue it down, and then add your sentiment, it would look all crooked. So there we have it, easy as can be. I'll set my glue aside for the time being and we'll, um, I will go ahead and show you how I stamp the sentiment. I'll set this aside temporarily. Okay, so bringing in my Stamparatus, I really like doing this um, technique which is to go ahead, die cut my image and have it ready to go and then just pop it back in a um, template like, well, it had been cut out of here. So um, I need my red ink. I'll go ahead, ink this up. And I do like um, having a double stamped for this particular card. I just like the red really, um, really bold because this is the beautiful, Christmas card and I just want those colors to look really vibrant. So I'll stamp this and it's perfect every time. <laughs> That's the beauty of the Stamparatus. So um, I will set this aside and I'll clean this up later with my um, 
chamois here and I will go ahead and show the next part which is the background that I created um, with the shimmer paints which is really fun so here we have the background I've already uh, ran it through the embossing folder which is the swirls and curls I love 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 this embossing folder if you don't have it it's definitely well worth it it's so much fun just crazy about it so um, I will I have a thing here a tray from like some food that I just used for this because it is really a little bit messy and I don't think I can really show this really well but we'll see so I just have the shimmer paint mixed in with rubbing alcohol in a little spritzer so there eh, I think that's pretty good okay so the more you spray on obviously the more um, it'll sparkle if it's a little bit of variance it doesn't really matter um, another tip I would say is to attach the back of the my layering cardstock I think it just makes it firmer plus if you wanted to adhere this right now you will have a little bit more bulk and it won't like tear as easily because once it's wet it could tear a little bit but I do have one already prepared for the card because I prefer to let that dry for at least 10 minutes so and I've attached the real red ribbon here this cotton ribbon is absolutely beautiful. It could go all year round too. It's not the shiny one that's in the holiday card, but it is in the um, main annual catalog. Okay, so I will bring in the pieces again <laughs> and I will show you how I um, finish this card. All right, so what I was saying is this will never show so that is really, really cool. But I do like having a little bit more height to this. So I will um, add another circle, which I have, I have over here, and go ahead and adhere that to my, um, the other circle. It'll create kind of a sandwich. This is just to add a little bit of height because I'm not gonna use dimensionals under this part. Okay, and then I will go ahead and add a little bit more glue and I will just attach it at this point right now. So I don't know if you can see this, I'm just bringing this in and I'm just going to cover that white circle. I want it to be pretty straight so these sprigs are like coming out of it, which is just beautiful. All right, I like that pretty well. And I will go ahead and bring in some dimensionals to add here um, at the top here. Um, Okay, one other thing I did do is I added one up here because this will eventually be covered. I know you normally wouldn't want to do that because it would show through and it's kind of sticking to my um, work surface here, but not to worry. It's not going to be a big deal in the end. Um, one thing I should have done right now is actually, I can still do this, is quickly adhere this to my base. So I will go ahead and take off my tear tape backings. I um, definitely like using the tear tape over the um, ribbon to hold it really tightly in place. You don't have to go around the complete back of the ribbon. I just hide those ends for this particular card. So bringing it back, I will just go ahead, line this card up and put it in place, hopefully straight. <laughs> we definitely want it straight. So there is the first part. Now I will go ahead and add um, this and I'll just use a little bit of liquid Tombow glue at this part here where the dimensionals aren't touching. And it should be pretty, um, it should stay definitely in place, okay. And the other thing I want to do is have this little red showing through this part of the die cut. I hope I got this straight. Looks pretty good. And now you can see a little bit here, but I'm really not concerned about that because this will go here. And then in addition to that, we will have the flower to cover up anything that might be showing. So bring in my Tombow and then set this just so, you know, you get 
and it shouldn't um, cover the sentiment. But if I want, I could add some glue dots, which I might do at the end. All right, so here's the flour. I will go ahead and bring back my um, blends. And I used real red for the main part. I'll quickly show you. This goes very quickly. I would suggest trying to avoid coloring the um, embossed, gold embossing, because it will kind of, the color, red will get on it and it just won't look right. It also, um, blends tend to dull the embossed part. So definitely try to avoid it, but it's not too hard to avoid with the blends. The blends go really fast with coloring. That's why I'm crazy about them. They're just so easy and you don't have those like lines that you would get if you used a regular marker. All right, so bringing in my fine tip edge of the cherry cobbler, I will just add a little bit of tips to this, if you will. I just think that I kind of look at this like a poinsettia flower, but I'm not sure really what it's supposed to be. <laughs> it's, I guess, whatever you want it to be. Um, I'll go ahead and add a little bit of my granny apple green to the center. I think that this makes a beautiful Christmas card. It goes great with real red, I think. So I highly recommend trying that combination of real red and granny apple green. I think it's stunning. Just a little bit of Tombow here. And I will put this in place. Now, I just want to cover that white circle, that half inch circle. I think that looks like it does the job. Isn't that beautiful? And I will add a little Wink of Stella and then we'll work on the inside of the card, which sometimes I've been forgetting to show you what I've done in the inside. Especially with dark cardstock, I really love adding an inside and you can sometimes expand on your sentiments inside the card, which is cool. So that's what I'll work on next. Okay, so bringing in my white cardstock and my stamps. With my first example, I used, um, I'll show that in a sec. Okay, I used the Season's Greetings in the crumb cake, but I kind of want to try it with red up here. I just felt like it wasn't quite enough of a splash. So um, bringing back the real red, I will start with that part. I definitely su suggest starting with the real red opposed to doing the little branches, um, do the center sentiment first because the branches you can kind of adjust. Now, I apologize, but you are going to see my head. Okay, all right, so that turned out pretty well. I was a little worried I'd get that crooked. <laughs> all right, so I'll bring in the um, granny apple green and I have, what I love about this particular set, the Feathers and Friends, fr Feathers and Frost, excuse me, is it includes a lot of mirror image, um, uh, mirror images of the stamps, which is wonderful. Oh, I got a little red. Boy, I was a little messy here. All right, I probably should clean up myself a little before I make a mess of things. So I'll bring in my chamois real quick, rub my hands with it off camera. <laughs> that way, I don't make a bigger mess than that. I can live with that, but if I get everything all over this, it would be a little bit more of a problem. All right, so crumb cake. I did like the bird kind of subtle. So the crumb cake definitely does that, and I'll just set him or her in the right-hand corner. And there is the inside of the card. I will quickly add a little bit of Tombow and adhere it, and. Um, hopefully you will get some good ideas from this card. I felt like using those circle punches really made the placement of these sprigs so much easier and foolproof compared to just trying to line them up and put them in place. And then, I don't know, it would just be like you would need to be have like two sets of hands to do that. So I hope you try the, my little trick out and tip. And there we have my card. Thank you so much for watching. Please consider subscribing. And if you do, don't forget to tap the bell for notifications. 
If there are any um, stamps or products you would like to order from Stamp It Up, please email me at mewants3 at gmail.com. Thanks again for watching and happy stamping.